After almost 20 years of talking about it, I finally made it to Rotterdam. Before my visit, I put a post on YouTube asking what I should see while I was there, and I received well over 200 comments. Thanks to everyone who responded. And surprisingly, for YouTube, there were only three stupid ones. There was so much to cover that I've split this into two videos. The other one is about the architecture, car-centric history, and post-war planning of Rotterdam. But this video is about every other way of traveling because there are a lot of ways to get around the city without a car. I took several forms of transit in Rotterdam, but I did not ride a bike. I mean, it's right there in the name of the channel. Of course, the bicycle infrastructure is pretty great by international standards, but it does lag a little bit behind some of the other cities in the Netherlands. Bicycle parking at major stations is provided and seems adequate, but I suspect that some of these will need upgrading in the near future, especially this one at Rotterdam Centraal. Still, there are plenty of totally separated bicycle paths, and cycling here seems pretty comfortable. If urban planners are looking for inspiration on how to integrate cycling into a car-friendly city, I personally think it would be better for them to look at Rotterdam rather than Copenhagen. But in the end, I'm a bit of a fair-weather cyclist. I mean, not literally, as I cycle in this weather, but what I mean is that I prefer not to cycle if public transit is convenient, and in Rotterdam, public transit is great. The metro network is clean, modern, and efficient. Frequencies are such that you don't need to look at a schedule, you just show up and take the next train. As far as I'm concerned, that's the real measure of a quality public transit system, because if you have to look up a schedule when you travel, your transit system has already failed you. The reach of the Rotterdam metro is remarkable too. You can take the metro all the way to Den Haag Central. We also took a ride on the latest metro line extension, which now brings metro trains out to the Hoek van Holland, 30 kilometers from the center, where you can catch ferries to the industrial ports as well as to England. This metro line is a repurposed heavy rail line, which allows you the bizarre experience of passing farmers' fields while on a metro train. When we got out to the Hoek van Holland, the high quality of the public transit, walking, and cycling infrastructure really surprised me. I mean, it's the Netherlands, so it shouldn't surprise me, but in any other country this would be considered too remote or too industrial to justify this kind of non-car infrastructure. I guarantee you it doesn't look like this when you get to the ferry port in England. Did I ever mention that I love the Netherlands? The trams in Rotterdam are fantastic too. They are modern, low-floor trams with convenient level boarding. I've never seen so many people with walkers and wheelchairs take the tram as I did in Rotterdam. This is what truly accessible public transit looks like. When I film my street scenes, I really like to get a tram going by in the shot if I can. In some cities, I'll be standing around for 10 or 20 minutes waiting for the next tram to arrive, but in Rotterdam, I rarely had to wait more than a minute or two. The frequency of the trams made them a trivially easy option for getting around town, which is great because trams are my absolute favorite form of public transportation. Also, grassy tram tracks. I love these. Rotterdam is a port city, and that's very evident in the variety and quantity of ships that you'll see there. I enjoyed watching all of the inland cargo barges constantly going by because I love shipping containers. They're like the TCPIP packets of the sea. But in addition to shipping, the rivers and canals also provide interesting transportation options, namely water buses and water taxis. The water buses are ferries that take set routes through the city. They're easily accessible by bicycle and a lot of passengers took a bike with them. You pay your fare using the OV chip cart that works on public transportation throughout the Netherlands, which is really convenient. We wanted to ride the water bus, but didn't really have any particular destination in mind, so we went to Kinderdijk, because who doesn't like 18th century windmills? The other option is water taxis, which are a very fast way of getting around, providing a point-to-point -point transportation method between water taxi stops. You can call to book one in advance, but we just showed up and waited. It feels weird to just stand around on a dock, but sure enough, a few minutes later, two water taxis came by, and we were able to go to the water taxi stop of our choice. Water taxis go fast, almost uncomfortably fast, so they can definitely be the quickest way to get around the city, as long as your destination is near the water. 
And finally, the last way we got around was by driving. But I'll talk about that in my next video. I'll also talk about the pedestrianized areas and one of the upcoming street improvements. So 20 years later, was Rotterdam worth the wait? Yeah, I think so. I was really impressed by the variety of public transit options, and things seem to be genuinely improving when it comes to walking and cycling too. I was pleasantly surprised, given its reputation as a city designed for the car. Unfortunately, there was still so much I didn't get a chance to see, so I will definitely be back someday. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my supporters on Patreon who pay me to ride transit in circles. <laughs> who am I kidding? I would have done that anyway. If you'd like to support the channel, visit patreon.com slash notjustbikes. And the next time I visit Rotterdam, I'd like to see the city by bike. If you have any advice on cycling in Rotterdam, or you know of any notable bicycle infrastructure there, good and bad, please let me know in the comments.